This is how we start every shoot, by the way. Just, I don't even know what that was. It's really important to practice your breathing, guys. Okay, so the Canon C70 is what we're talking about today. It has been our daily driver for a little over a month now. So we've had a chance to take it around the block a couple of times. We've taken it to the Grand Canyon. We've taken it out on a job. I've also been using it for vlogging. And I might just go as far as to say, it, be my favorite camera, possibly. I don't know, Sam, what's your favorite camera of all time? This one or that one? This one is C300 Mark III or C70. Well, they have the same sensor. Yeah, but this one's bigger. <laughs> yeah, well, it does shoot raw too. That's what you're supposed to say. All right. <laughs> It also shoots raw. For me, it's a really close race between the Canon C70 and that Sony A7S III. I mean, this Sony is incredible for its size, its performance, outstanding, but it does still leave me wanting a little bit more. This Canon C70 has the beautiful built-in ND filters. I mean, it's great. You just press this button and the ND filter slides in right in front of the sensor. You don't have to worry about carrying around a bunch of different ND filters, depending on which lenses you're shooting on. It turns into a mess. I mean, let's start with the obvious. It has that dual gain output 16.5 stops of dynamic range. We could also do 4K at 120 frames per second, 10 bit, 422 while maintaining autofocus. So the power. It's a beast. It's also a very pleasant camera to use. Canon does such a great job with the user interface. Very easy to figure out. The buttons are well placed. The monitor is great, bright, and colorful. I mean, that's another complaint I have about the Sony A7S III is the LCD screen on there. It's always so uninspiring to look at it and go, this footage looks okay. I mean, of course it looks great once you put it up on your computer display, but it's not very exciting and inspiring just looking through that dinky little screen. And also just look at the size of it. It has all the things I want in a camera and compared to a mirrorless camera, sure, it's pretty big. But you compare it to any cinema camera with this kind of capability, it's tiny. It has dual mini XLR inputs with phantom power. I mean, it's a professional camera ready to go. Here in Los Angeles, if we try to go out and film something professional without a permit, we get kicked out so fast. So I always like having a camera that is very low profile. This is big to where it looks professional, but maybe you can get away with saying like, oh, I'm just a vlogger. Like try taking this into a target and see how fast they kick you out. Should we go for an experiment, Sam? Let's do it. I'm also out of toothpaste. So maybe we can get some while we're there. Yeah, let's go. I think I'm also out of toilet paper. The true test, will we get kicked out of a Target? Sam always comes straight to the toy aisle, every time. Rock'em Sock'em Robot? Hey, that's actually a classic. There's a security right there. We walked right past him, he didn't care. So the C70 is low profile enough to be able to go into a Target and not immediately get kicked out. Should we try again with a slightly bigger camera? Okay, so this is unusual. I thought I would've gotten kicked out right away, but no one's saying anything yet. <laughs> the one time I wanna get kicked out, no one says a word. I mean, that's so weird. I've never had this happen before. Every time I carry this camera around, I get kicked out within 10 seconds. But somehow, we managed to not get kicked out. That's funny. I think when your camera gets this big, they don't even question you. They just assume you have a permit. They're like, you must be with the news or something. I'm sure you have permission. They're like, oh, corporate's <laughs> making another commercial? Great. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so bad example, but check this out. This is my compact backpack. Well, look how nicely that C70 fits right in there. And I still have room for my microphone, a couple of different lenses. You know, something like an FX6 or C300 Mark III, I would not be putting in this bag. Now, one of the things that excited me the most is that it has that Super 35 dual gain output sensor with an RF mount. And dual gain output basically means that there's two readings taken off the sensor, one to get nice saturated highlights, the other to get really clean low noise shadows. And the camera combines those two to give you a really clean image and also really good dynamic range. Now, a lot of people seem to be turned off by the Super 35 mil sensor because it's all about full frame these days. But I actually kind of like it because if you get a Super 35 cinema lens, that's PL mount or something, all you have to do is get an RF to PL adapter on here and it's gonna get you a nice clean 4K image. You don't have to crop into the sensor at all. And then if you want to run EF lenses, there's this magical little speed booster down here made by Canon. And this will get you really, really close to a full frame field of view. Comparing it to my A7S III with the same exact focal length, I want to say the Sony is just slightly, slightly wider. But the advantage that the C70 has is that it also does 4K DCI, which is going to give you a little bit more horizontal pixels than that A7S III does. So when that's accounted for, we get an even wider field of view than the Sony A7S III. Now the speed booster is also nice because it utilizes 
just more of the lens's image circle, which gives you a more similar depth of field to a full frame camera. Now there's a very specific set of lenses that are supposed to be compatible with this Canon Speed Booster. And every time I attach anything else, it does give me a little notification that this lens might not work perfectly on this camera, but so far every lens I've attached to it seems to be working just fine. And the Speed Booster also funnels in more light onto the sensor so we get a full extra stop of light. So this is a 24 to 70 f2.8, but now it becomes an f2. We still have the depth of field of a 2.8, but we get an F2 of exposure. So looking at the bottom, this is a little bit unusual here. We got a three eighth inch right there in the center and we have two quarter inches and notice they go sideways instead of front to back. It's a little bit awkward because usually I use two screws to mount it to a tripod, but if I attach it this way, it's gonna go on sideways and that's not really gonna work out. A little quarter inch right there on the side. So I guess if you wanna put it on the side for Instagram or whatever, but I do like that there's several mounting options all throughout the camera so that when you attach a rig onto it, it's gonna be really solid. I mean, this is the C300. I have a bright tangerine cage on here and once you attach one of these then you have all the mounting options in the world That's one thing I didn't like about the black magic was that there was only one single quarter inch down here on the bottom And maybe a few little slots to hold a rig in place But this is gonna be much more sturdy now the first job We took this on it was to be a B camera for the C300 mark 3 and oh my gosh the match perfect Now I needed the B cam on a gimbal all day So I went with the DJI RS2 now It's not fully compatible right out of the box because this grip kind of extends out a little bit further than most cameras. But Tilta makes this plate right here, which is an extended Arca Swiss. So now I push it as far right as it can physically go, and this will give me the perfect balance. And I was on this gimbal all day, had zero issues. So if you have an RS2, definitely recommend that Tilta plate. Now I still want to get a proper cage for the C70, but here it is slapped onto my handheld rig. I have it fed over to my monitor via HDMI. There's one thing I do wish this camera had was an S. SDI port so I could feed it over that way. It's just a little bit more stable But this is one of my favorite combos to take out on the project now because you have your more powerful a cam right here It can shoot raw you have your lighter smaller more compact B cam you can slap it on a gimbal You can do handheld work for extended periods of time with it now Let me get some slow-mo shots of Dylan here and it's pretty decent We could get 4k at 120 frames per second We get 10 bit, but we can't do the intra codec We have to step down to long GOP but I'm not complaining It still looks really good and we still get that dual pixel autofocus. We don't get face detect though. Well, another thing I like is that you also have the option to record the slow-mo clips with audio and it does actually save it as a separate audio wave file but I love that option because before if you go into slow and fast mode then you lose audio completely but you know you never know when you might decide oh I want that audio bite. Now if we want to go past 120 we do have to go into the cropped mode and we can get up to 180 frames per second so the slow-mo isn't as good as something you would get out of this Sony a7s 3 Here's a little comparison we did between these two cameras. Should I wear goggles? Just you gotta pray to Thor. Just, just pray to Thor. I'm wearing my glasses. <laughs> I'll wear your glasses here. I'll wear Sam's glasses for eye protection. Yeah! All right, who's cleaning this up? Let's play rock, paper, scissors. Go! Oh, oh, whatever. Fun. So the a7s3 is the clear winner here faster frame rates uses more of the sensor but that's only if you really have to go past 120 frames per second that 4k 120 is usually plenty for me you could definitely make things look epic this is how dylan looks with just the zero lighting modification do you wreck sunlight i'm gonna scrim dylan real quick oh my gosh look at that dylan do you feel like a movie star Course. You look fabulous, Dylan. That's the goal. Chris says, is it as comfortable and as intuitive as the C100? Oh yeah, if you're coming from any of Canon cinema cameras, you're gonna feel right at home. But in terms of power, this is on a whole nother level from the C100. I mean, dual gain output sensor, 10 bits, 422, 4K. These are all things that the C100 did not have. Is the autofocus as sh as people are saying, uh, yes and no. It's very similar to what I was experiencing with the C300 Mark III. If you're properly exposed and it sees the face nice and clear, it's gonna stick that focus. But as soon as you go about three stops underexposed, it just drifts. So check out this example, C70 on the left, the A7S III on the right. And if we go two stops underexposed, they both do great. But as soon as we go to three, this Canon C70 just slowly starts to drift back and forth. It's on this constant hunt for focus, but it it never locks on. And what's weird is that the camera does know that Sam's face is right there. It just can't ever grasp the focus. The Sony on the other hand, no problems, even four stops underexposed. And also keep in mind that this is currently a native RF lens, but I get the same type of issue with any type of lens. So to get reliable autofocus, you need more exposure, even if you just give it that exposure through ISO, which I thought was kind of interesting. So it's definitely not the best autofocus. I feel like I've gotten better autofocus out of the Canon EOS R, but at the same time, it's also very 
very consistent. So if you know that you're gonna set your exposure right there and your subject isn't gonna walk into a darker room or anything like that, then you could definitely rely on it. Matt asks, only one camera to own your entire life, C70 or Komodo? Probably C70. Red cameras look very cinematic right out of the camera, but I feel like the C70 can just do more with less limitations. So there's more cases where I can use this. I wouldn't be vlogging on a Komodo. Are there noticeable drawbacks with the DSLR ergonomics when shooting professional video? Sure, I wouldn't mind a few extra buttons on this camera, but I can get to all the features I need pretty quickly still with what they've given us. And the second thing is that cinema cameras tend to be bigger and heavier. So when you're doing handheld work, if you don't have any sort of image stabilization at all, smaller cameras tend to shake a whole lot more. Like I hate that little small camera jitter that you get if you have no stabilization. So attaching this to a handheld rig will give me a little bit more size and mass to work with and it'll make it feel more like a cinema camera than something small. And on the side here, we have two mini XLR inputs right here. They're just like regular XLRs. You just need an adapter and you can still feed phantom power through them. And below that is just your stereo eighth inch mic jack right there. So you can actually record all these channels if you want. You have four channels that you can record. The first two channels, you have controls right here behind the monitor. For channel three and four, you do have to dive into the menu a little bit to adjust it so you're not going to be adjusting them on the fly but still we're getting four channels of audio on here which is awesome a lot of times i'll just use three and four to mirror my first two channels and just set them at a different level so in case i need to recover a peaked audio clip i can what do you hate about it oh i had a terrible experience with this memory card here this one right here this is a lexar v90 do not buy this one it's supposed to be fast enough but while i was on that shoot it just kept cutting on me because of a buffer overflow sometimes even at the lower resolution i was actually getting way more stability just using a typical sand disc card and i read that other people are having the same issue this car's just not fast enough so i'm bummed that i bought this and i'm just waiting for my sony ones to come into stock so i can finally stop worrying about my memory cards can it be a vlogging camera yeah actually i've been using it to vlog quite a bit it's just light enough to where i can comfortably vlog with it but it does get heavy over time but i do love the results that come out of this camera i get that dynamic range sometimes the autofocus will drift off a little bit especially if i go into a lower less well lit area as i mentioned but yeah this is what i mean by this being such a versatile camera is that i can just pick it up and start vlogging with it i shot a few vlogs on the c70 so i'll link one right there i'm also really impressed by the battery life out of these it's the same type of batteries you would use in the c300 mark 3 so if we use the canon bp a30 battery which is the smaller one the c300 mark 3 will not last a full hour on this battery but we put that same battery on the canon c70 guess how much battery life we get over three hours. I got three hours and 17 minutes, which is crazy. That's over three times more efficient than the C300 Mark III. If we put on a BPA-60, which is the bigger battery, we're talking about six to seven hours of runtime, but I do not have the patience to sit around for that long to test out this battery life. But regardless, that's awesome. Does it have overheat issues like previous Canons? Also, would you take it over the FX6? I'm actually really impressed at how good this is at managing its heat because I can record for a long time no issues even in the incubator canon's pro cinema cameras are really good about managing its heat but what surprised me is that the canon c300 which has the same sensor as this it overheats very fast not overheating in the way where it shuts off and melts but the fan has to start blowing pretty quickly but this canon c70 doesn't seem to need to do that so i don't know what they did or maybe the c300 is just processing a lot more so it has to actively cool so much faster but very little overheating issues and the fan doesn't have to blow out like a blow dryer every time you're filming for an extended period of time so it's actually quieter than the c300 mark III, which is a good thing would i take it over the fx6 the reason why we went for this is number one the form factor that's very important for us it's like a massive dslr opposed to the fx6 which is like a compact cinema camera i also really like this sensor i loved all the footage that came out of the c300 mark III, and now we have the same colors look, look at this i'm just gonna hit record right now i'm just gonna slap the default c log 2 lut on here Oh yeah, it's gonna look amazing. So because of those reasons, I probably lean towards Canon, but you know, depending on the project I was shooting or whatever, I may go for the FX6. Chris says, I'm struggling a little bit with exposing on the Canon C70. What's your experience or recommendation on exposing with the camera? Oh, this is another huge reason why I love the Canon C70 is because it has false colors. So right here, there's waveform, which is a pretty decent way to expose. But my favorite is false color. And I actually swapped out my zebra button, but it literally tells you 
exactly what's blown out, what's highlights, what's shadows, what's underexposed. And once you learn how to use it, it's the best way to expose, in my opinion. I mean, whenever we're shooting in the area, Alexa, false color is all we use for exposure. So you could put your skin tones or whatever, your subject, your shadows, you could put it exactly where it needs to be. And also you can expose a little bit towards the shadows on the C70. We did a little bit of testing with this dynamic range and it's very similar to the C300 where the highlights, it's good, but it's not as good as like a A7S III in terms of the highlights. But in the shadows, it destroys. It does so good in the shadows. So if anything, you wanna slightly, slightly underexpose opposed to overexposing. Holy crap, look. <laughs> That's pretty cool. What? Look at that thing. Where did that take off from? It literally just came out of here. But yeah, this sensor definitely does really, really good in the shadows. Budget friendly tech says compare it to the C70. So he's talking about the Sony A1 that we're recording on right now. Now the A1 shoots 8K, so it's definitely a lot sharper. So if you're gonna compare pixel to pixel, the A1 definitely going to win. But aside from that, I would say the Canon C70 still beats it in terms of video quality, better dynamic range, just really good colors. Sony's been getting really good with their colors too but I still think Canon has that slight edge and it's just easier, it's a little bit more natural and it's just loaded with video features. Like having the built-in ND filters, it's a huge deal. Having built-in mini XLRs, great, awesome. Having built-in false color, that's huge to me because if I have false color, I feel very confident in my exposure. Pretty much every camera that I pick up that doesn't have false color, I'm generally guesstimating how it's exposed, but with false color, I'm very confident every single time. You guys want to know what's crazy? Is this is only moonlight and I can see you guys pretty clearly. Yeah? Yeah. How many fingers am I holding? Two. I can see so three. <laughs> yeah, that's easy. Now I would say the Canon C70's low light capabilities are good, but it's nothing unusual. I mean, ever since the A7S III came out and does really clean 12,800 ISO, everything else tends to feel very insignificant in comparison. But keep in mind that we can run a speed booster on this, so that gives us double the light or one full stop. So instead of running 12,800 ISO where you might have been, now we can come back to 60. 400 ISO and get that same exposure. It's also worth noting that you're going to want to get the official speed booster from Canon. Actually, Canon doesn't even call it a speed booster. They just call it some RF to EF adapter with 0.71 magnification or whatever. But I have the speed booster from Metabones. I was hoping that would work with this camera, but unfortunately it does not like to communicate with the camera. So I ended up getting the Canon one and this one works great. There's also been some leaked photos of a Sony FX3. Oh man, just as I thought I figured out which cameras I wanted, there's another one coming out. I don't know any official details on this camera, but by looking at the photos, it does look really compact. So I don't imagine it's gonna be as feature loaded as the FX6 or FX9. And I would say the C70 is a direct competitor to the FX6. So I don't imagine this FX3 is gonna be replacing my C70, but perhaps it's gonna replace my A7S3, my ultra compact camera. But overall, I think Canon did such a good job with this Canon C70. Just to clarify, Canon has sponsored me in the past, but this video I'm making completely on my own. I bought this Canon C70. I paid full price for it, unfortunately. But after using it for this past month, I do not regret it at all. And I'll throw links to all this stuff in the description. If you're gonna buy one, you should totally use my legs. One last tip. Remember this Arca Swiss plate I put on here earlier? I love this because it stays on very securely because it utilizes all three screws. But a lot of my tripods use this Manfrotto plate. So what I've done is I got a plate from the DJI RSC2. So it's kind of like an adapter for the Arca Swiss. I attached that here and now it has a Manfrotto plate. And since it's secured on with three screws, it's not going anywhere. The reason why I would say the RSC2 plate for for this is because the RS plate has a few gears here and at least for my tripod, it kept kind of getting in the way. And then you could just slide it out. You still have that Arca Swiss plate and you can just go ahead and attach it onto an Arca Swiss tripod just like that. Then you wanna pop it on the Ronin. This plate's still here. This slides right on. So that's been working for me so far. Small rigs also putting out plates. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be putting out cages and rigs for it. So there's gonna be plenty of options. That's just what I've been doing. That's all I got for this video. I want you guys to do me a favor. Let me know in the comments what was your favorite Super Bowl commercial? You'll see why in next week's video. Anyway, see you guys later. I just kind of hurt my arm. Yeah, I don't know what I did. I just, oh, and now my arm hurts. Every year that goes by, it's just so much easier for me to get hurt. Eventually, I'm just gonna be like, bye guys. Oh.